your weight is not to blame for your health problems. You are not to blame for your health problems. Bro, what am I reading right now? That makes no sense. If you're not responsible for your health, then who is? Look, I'm curious. Maybe I'm wrong, right? Maybe there's some sort of supervillain out there running around shooting people with an obesity ray just for the heck of it. Maybe that's why you're fat. I truly cannot comprehend how somebody could arrive to this conclusion. Who knows? Maybe having love handles makes people delusional. Who knew that being built like a cue ball was a literal risk factor for insanity? <laughs> Can exercise really beat the blues? Growing body of evidence says it does. It's been widely reported that exercise might be more effective treatment for reducing symptoms of depression. Yeah, of course, you're doing something great for your body, which will make you exude a lot of the happy molecules that you lack if you are a depressed person. And also, it's a fantastic way to assert control of your life. If things are not going your way in life, if things are going negatively, if things are just not lining up, a fantastic hobby is working out and seeing physical changes in yourself that are positive and are completely the result of your own hard work. That's why it's kind of interesting to see the metamorphosis of a fat activist. They stop being fat activists the moment that they notice that they're losing weight properly. The moment that they can actually see positive reinforcement in their behavior in the mirror. They see it every single day and all of a sudden magically less neurotic, less jealous, more sociable, and overall feel better. Foods I say are okay to eat as a registered dietitian that make people on the internet mad. Ugh, okay, let's see your list, registered dietitian. Oh my god, are we making this argument? Yes, burger and fries is somewhat of a diverse meal. You are getting every nutrient. But the problem is, is that people don't know how to stop eating burgers and fries. You don't become obese from having a single plate of unhealthy food. You become obese when that one plate becomes many plates, and the reason why you're eating isn't to feed yourself, but to feel better. These posts are incredibly transparent. They're not trying to be health conscious. They're not trying to change your mind on what you think is healthy. They want to reaffirm bad behavior. God forbid anybody tell you a food is unhealthy because people like this poster would immediately respond with, well, sugar is a nutrient. It's an incredibly obtuse way of arguing. And to be honest, they ought to be plain about their intentions. They want people to feel healthy and not be health. Don't mind me just fixing the DSM for the student who rents this copy after I'm done using it for this class. This is so wrong. It doesn't even get the cause of the O word right. It's straight up repeating the fallacy of calories in versus calories out. Sweet Jesus, apparently obese people are immune to thermodynamics. Somehow these roly poly people are saving calories from smaller meal portions than healthy people. It's the same argument as every fat person I know is on a diet. They're all using restricted meal plans. Is that right? Because it really begs the question, are fat people efficient eaters? Because some Somehow they're able to get more energy, calories, from a smaller portion of food. If that were true, every fat person would be a superhero, but obviously that's not true. And I have no idea what they're talking about when it comes to the O word and the history behind that. Because over four seasons of this video, I've gotten multiple different claims and conclusions as to why obesity is the name and term for people who are built like pears. So I'm truly curious what hers is. Is it racism, fat phobia, diet culture, misogyny? Take your pick, cause I would love to know what hers is. It would actually make this post funny and not incredibly pathetic. I was told the other day by one of my students something. He looked at my badge and then at me and said, you've lost weight, good job. Since fatness isn't a bad thing and is actually a minority status, it felt like someone telling a black person, <laughs> what? You're less black now, congratulations, what? Oh my God. We'll, we'll touch on that soon, but l let's hear her out, right? Let's, let's listen to what she has to say. Like, I am the only one who sees it that way and how absolutely wrong it is. Like congratulating a gay person after a session of conversion therapy. <laughs> Bruh, what is she on, bro? She, these comparisons are baffling, bro. Now, yes, I said I was going to hear her out, but I, I retract that statement. I, I was way too bold saying that. I thought it was going to get a little less crazy. Ugh, where do I start? First off, being fat, at least in the United States, is not a minority status thing in any capacity. You are built like everyone else, so please take a thousand seats. Oh my God. And the comparison to somebody going to a black person and saying, congratulations, you're less black, is wild to me. Because 
There is nothing in the world that could make you African. You're born African. That's how that works, all right? You made yourself big with your bad decision making and now are acting like you're some sort of protected minority, when in reality, you're not a minority at all. You're just like everybody else who can't put a fork down. And then the gay conversion <laughs> statement. <laughs> Where do I start? <laughs> That's torture. <laughs> People are getting beaten up. People are getting kidnapped. Last time I checked, you just went to a gym. Nobody kidnapped you and forced you to lose weight. You made the choice to lose weight and then got pissed when someone brought it up in the nicest way possible. Losing weight intentionally is never not problematic. And yes, I do endorse naming and shaming people that make it public that they want to intentionally lose weight because the only way we'll make any change is publicly shaming people who are bigots. Make something unthinkable, do it today. And there it is. This isn't about politics. This isn't about feeling good about oneself and having self-esteem. It's this giant battle between uglies and everybody else. Because the uglies are mad that they made themselves ugly and they want to change the rules. That's why they use these words like problematic and bigoted, even when your own decision making affects you. Last time I checked, going to the gym doesn't affect anybody else but me. But they have to use these words in order to get you thinking, like you're somehow systemically oppressing people by going out of your way to lose 30 pounds and looking beautiful. I want to make this incredibly clear to everyone watching this video right now. Please ignore statements like this. This is coming from some negative projection. This person wants to drag you down like you're in a crab bucket. It's terrible. It's one thing to make up some politics in order to justify your body. It's another thing to shame other people for doing something that you disagree with, something that doesn't affect you. And it's funny that I say that, because I'm pretty sure from their perspective, people who go out of their way to diet and people who go out of their way to calorie count is affecting them, because that's some sort of perpetuation of systemic oppression. And that's simply not true, because stigma is not oppression. Opinion is not oppression. And certainly other people's individual behaviors that affect them individually are not the actions of systemic oppression. It's not happening. That's not true. Nobody believes you, but hey, at least you have fat Tumblr to cry and whine on when you don't feel pretty. Congratulations on denying your body nourishment such that it ate itself for survival. What? Are you trying to say that that's what dieting is? That's not true at all. Before we even jump on that, let's get an understanding of how your body processes energy on a day-by-day -day basis. Yes, fat is stored calories. You wanna know why? Because sometimes you're not eating. Though sometimes would be anytime you're walking, anytime you're breathing, anytime you're seeing, anytime you're hearing, anytime you're doing anything that's not consuming. Imagine if your body had a power cable. Fat is that power cable being connected to the wall at all times, and somehow that power cable is wireless. It gives you energy during the times where you're not eating. That's what fat does. Now let's take a look at how they tried to demonize dieting by saying that burning calories is your body eating itself. Yes, that is true, but your body does it all the time. It has to, because you don't eat at all hours of the day. Did you know that your body also dries itself out? That happens too if you're not drinking water at every hour. I swear, posts like this are designed for the dumbest people, or at least people who are willing to accept anything that they read as long as that thing is affirming their wide bodies. I don't understand. Is there any critical thinking? And I know that question might seem facetious, but I'm being so genuine. Is there any critical thinking? in the fat logic movement? Is there anybody who's willing to just sit down and be like, man, maybe I'm just projecting. Maybe I'm just looking for an excuse to not do anything. Body neutrality, leaving skinny people's bodies when I tell them a part of being an ally to fat people is to stop accepting compliments about being skinny. You wanna know how I'm an ally to fat people? By telling them the truth. That's being a true ally. Being a friend and caring about somebody else would be to inform them that being greater than 180 pounds is concerning and absolutely shortening their lives. But no, these people are too narcissistic for that. Cause like I said before, they're trying to change the rules of attractiveness. They want you to play down all of your hard work and all of your attractiveness to bolster theirs, which will never happen. Cause that's the funny thing. People will be people at the end of the day. It doesn't matter how much politicking someone does. When the chips are down and someone's trying to pick a partner, they're not gonna pick you, bro. You're bottom of the barrel, low on the roster, last picked, bottom of the alphabet. I'm, I can keep going. It's terrible. It's harsh, but it's the truth. If you want to be seen as attractive, you have to be attractive. And funny enough, when it comes to people who are overweight or just not skinny, 
those rules apply to them too. There's a reason why there's a difference between curvy and obese. There's a difference between short stack and just stacked. Yes, is being skinny the standard? Absolutely. But even in your realm of big bodies, there's still objective standards that people try to meet. So it begs the question why these people won't do the work and just meet the standard, even if it means that they're chubby or short stack or a little curvy. That's approachable for them, yet they don't want to do that. I'm not exaggerating when I say the current state of fat phobia is the equivalent of the state of sexism, homophobia, transphobia, etc. pre-1900s. That's how horrid and dire the situation is. I beg your pardon? I beg your pardon? Being gay was and still is illegal and punishable by death in many countries. Women were and still are forced into marriages, denied basic human rights, etc. Yes, beauty standards can be harmful, and fat people do face aversion in society, but this comparison is just really disrespectful. We're back at it again with wild comparisons, and it looks like people are getting checked on Tumblr now, which is wild, that usually doesn't happen. Personally, when I think about beauty standards being harmful though, that's where things become complex, because beauty standards in of themselves are fine. In my opinion, where things go wrong is in the individual level. Like someone struggling with a severe eating disorder or someone struggling with low self-esteem that would lead them to do potentially dangerous looks maxing tips that they find on TikTok or Twitter. And I will admit that if you don't meet the standard, you might feel desperate enough to do those things. But are the standards bad in of themselves? No. I would say the way that you approach that standard is where things go sideways. And also a true understanding of what you can and cannot look like. I know personally that I fall short of many beauty standards. And instead of internalizing that inadequacy, I chose to external my effort to look good into attractiveness standards that I could actually meet. Going to the gym to bulk up was one of them, and that's approachable to everyone who's listening to this video right now. You might not be able to check off every single attractiveness box, but the ones that you can or you think you can approach to checking off, the onus is on you to do the work. And if you genuinely feel that you can't approach that standard in a healthy way, you must reach out to friends, family members, loved ones, and they'll actually participate in your journey to look good. You'd be surprised how many people in your life want to help you change your wardrobe, lose some weight, or just become casually social. Whatever you need, there's others in your life who will help you get there. Please, I think there is a part of me, because I'm in this fat body that doesn't work right, I saw someone say that straight white men are the only group you can still joke about. There are fat jokes everywhere. I'll always feel a little less than because of my size and secondarily my Crohn's disease. That is why I'll never view anything I do as extremely successful because there's always, yeah, but you look like that. I don't mean to feel as bad for my fat struggle, it's just real. People hate fat people so much. I don't think there is a way, at least I haven't figured it out yet, to both feel successful and exist in a world that's like, I don't want to sit by you. He or she is so close, so close to figuring out that being obese and showing others that you don't have control over food, something that almost every reasonable person on the planet has control over, kind of discredits your overall character and personality. It really doesn't matter how professional you are in your career or how skilled you are in a hobby or trade. When people see that you're fat, it's like, man, you are good at this, but you are terrible at something simple. Is that fair? Is the stigma fair? No, no stigmas are fair. Everybody wants to be able to do things and not feel judgment. The only thing that people like I and people like this poster disagree on is what is worthy of judgment. They genuinely believe that being fat is just normal and should be accepted. It's not normal. It never will be normal. The most that you can ever ask to somebody else is for them not to be rude to you. Last time I checked, fat people have the same rights as everybody else. Fat people have the same entitlements to being treated well as everybody else. But people are still going to have their beliefs. People are going to still be able to perceive the stigma, perceive the taboo. And it's funny how people can acknowledge this in other behavior and be honest about how it's taboo and the only real expectation out there is for tolerance, not necessarily acceptance. That's fine, yet for fat people, we have to throw all of those rules out of the window and just accept them outright because they can't feel good otherwise. That's ridiculous. This post was submitted anonymously. Thin privilege is not being laughed out of your therapist's office when you confess to eating less than 900 calories for an entire month. Cap! That is such a lie. How are you typing this? If you were truly obese, you would have died of a heart attack from the stress, from the fact that your body immediately wasn't getting 3,000 calories per day and now is being restricted to 900 calories for the next 30 days. That doesn't happen. That is 
the most blatant lie on the planet. Thin people can't do that, all right? That's how I know that's a lie. Thin people can't do that unless they have to do it, unless they're experiencing a famine. Nothing else makes sense. Nothing else. Jesus. Thin privilege is not having another therapist tell you you can't have an eating disorder because you certainly don't look like you have one. <laughs> <laughs> no way. No, no way, bro. That's insane. Insane. Oh my God. What? Your therapist told you that? Thank God someone told you the truth. Thin privilege is being forgiven and comforted when you have a panic attack over an extra 100 calories you weren't accounting for instead of being scolded. Now your thin friend is absolutely bugging. You should not be having a panic attack over eating 100 calories more than what you anticipated if you're going out to eat or even if you're cooking. That's really crazy and you should talk to somebody about that. That might turn into an eating disorder. And to be honest, it makes sense that that thin person is being forgiven and comforted because that's incredibly abnormal behavior. If you were to complain about having an extra 100 calories on your plate, yeah, nobody is going to be like super moved by that because your plate is already saturated with calories. No one's going to say anything. Sure, someone might scold you, especially if they care about you, but the normal person would just hear you complain and then ignore it completely because it's a wild statement in your situation. So this person's crazy. This person doesn't know what they're talking about. They just are looking for things to complain about. Thin privilege is knowing you'll get treatment for an eating disorder instead of being dismissed. Oop, tell the whole story. No, 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 no. You don't think obesity is an eating disorder, so you would never go to your doctor and ask for that type of treatment. You want them to support your lifestyle, not try to cure it. Those struggling with anorexia, if they are motivated to go to the hospital, which not many of them are, which makes it such a debilitating disorder, they're almost certainly going to be honest with their physician. Unlike you, someone who knows something is wrong refusing to go to the doctor and receiving that treatment because you want your body to be affirmed. You want your thoughts and feelings to be validated. It's not thin privilege to get good medical care, especially if you lie to the doctor. Sweet Jesus, what's the last one? Let's see what the last one is. Thin privilege is knowing that you have to lose dangerous amounts of weight to be taken seriously. How do you think you got there, sweetie? Who put on the dangerous amounts of weight? Last time I checked, they didn't fall out the sky. Last time I checked, no one gets fat through osmosis. Now this image already is cringe. Reject fat phobia, leave these items for those who need them. It gets even more cringe when you find out that this item was at a thrift store. So apparently it's still a problem for fat people to find clothes that they can fit even in a bargain basement store. It begs the question that when you're literally buying from a donation bin and you still can't find something that you can wear, Maybe, just maybe, you should lose some weight. Instead of telling other people to just ignore clothes for your sake, right? God forbid. It seems like everybody on the planet has to make sure that your world is perfect. Otherwise, it's bedlam, right? Otherwise, it's bigotry. Otherwise, it's oppression. So yeah, it's so great that the oppressor left you some clothes to wear, right? Because last time I checked, oppressors don't care about the people that they oppress. But you want us to care. You want us to leave you some clothes. Otherwise, you'll just be a naked pair. I am 5'9", 170 pounds. On paper, I am overweight, my BMI is 25 something, but I look thin with the exception of my mommy tummy and my size FG boobs. Science is racially biased. BMI was developed based on white males, so don't expect it to factor black feminine feature. Oh my God. Seriously, this has been thoroughly debunked. The BMI standard is not just for white men, it's for bodies, it's for humans. It's an average, it's a guesstimate. That's why people with high BMIs can also be muscled out and really, really bulked up because it's the amount of weight on your body compared to your height. BMI is a measuring stick. It tells a doctor just how overweight someone could be, but it's not the definitive answer for whether or not someone is healthy because somebody can be overweight with low body fat, dense muscles, and dense bones, but you don't have any of those attributes. You don't like being considered overweight because I look thin. You don't look thin. You're 5'9 and 170. That's not thin. You might be chubby, but that chub is absolutely dangerous to your health because you've already pushed the envelope with 170 pounds. Within a year, you could be 200 pounds if you truly don't care about your body. And at that point, you're 5'9 and 200 pounds. This is a warning sign. You're probably at the cusp of overweight. It's time to cut back. I was showing my kid how to feed our dogs this morning. We have two very different sized dogs, so they get different kinds and amounts of food. My kid said, oh, I'm surprised about that. It's very different than humans because you can have a person in a really big body who eats less or is less hungry and a person in a really small body who eats more and is more hungry. Your kid said that? You sure about that?
You sure you want to tell the whole world that your child said all of that? Because that sounds incredibly affirming to you, fat mom. Let's be honest. That sounds incredibly useful to whatever account that you're posting this to and incredibly affirming to whatever body you're imprisoned in. Now, we all know what argument they're trying to make. They're trying to make the metabolism argument, which absolutely is a factor when it comes to fat people, because you can easily destroy your thyroid and have a very, very hard time losing weight. But that doesn't mean it's impossible. That means that you need to see a doctor and that normal methods of calorie counting and dieting are beyond you. You need to see someone who can give you prescriptions and can give you a seriously scheduled and strategized diet plan. You need to talk to a professional. But for everyone who is not in that position, lose weight. You don't have a slow metabolism. You just eat a lot. Your metabolism can't keep up. And to my thin viewers who are like, I got a great metabolism. I don't have to care about what I have to eat. That's going to slow down as you age. If you're in your early 20s or late teens, yeah, I bet it's great right now. But once you hit 30, don't lean back on a really healthy thyroid and a really healthy metabolism. You'll absolutely need to lose weight. And unfortunately, at that age, it's going to be a little bit harder than it is to, you know, build your body now. So if you're in your early 20s, especially if you're male, and if you're in your late teens, especially if you're male, this is your opportunity to literally make yourself look like a god. This is your opportunity to get all of the muscles that you'll have for the rest of your life. And our final post of the day is a really simple one. I got it off of Instagram. It's really just stupid and funny. The 28 benefits of being fat. I can't think of any. If you guys can put 28 benefits of being fat in the comments, go ahead. I'm sure it's going to be a great time and a great read. Bruh, I can't even imagine what could compel somebody to post this online seriously. And I know that slideshow was long too. 28 posts? Are you serious on Instagram? Who's going to swipe through all of that? Well, we all know who's going to swipe through all of that. But like a normal person would never. But somebody desperate for affirmation? Absolutely. They'd scroll through that like they'd scroll through TikTok, bro. The dopamine hit from that affirmation has to be crazy. I bet that's what these people are addicted to. They're not really believing in fat ideology or fat activism. But they are addicted to the affirmation. They are addicted to the constant fake compliments. Have you seen any fat TikToker? Good grief. Their comments are full of so much cap. It's unimaginable. And it's really sad because the people who are saying, oh my gosh, go off, sis. You look great in that bikini are some of the biggest enemies on the planet. They're saying that to you because they would never wear that themselves. They're saying that to you because they just don't want to be mean. They want to make you feel good. It's not a legitimate compliment. It's just pandering to your delusion and it begs the question for these people who believe in these ideologies and those in the audience who are obese or overweight just how long are you going to keep up the delusion how long are you going to buy into it what's the breaking point what's going to wake you up is it these videos or is it going to be somebody close to you telling you that maybe if you stopped now you'd be able to survive into your 80s you'd be able to grow old with a friend a loved one or a partner it might be fine to be overweight or obese now because your body's young and is stacking the damage but it won't be fine when you meet somebody important to you or your family wants to grow old with you and you can't because instead of trying to be healthy, you just wanted to feel good. I hope this video is a wake up call. I hope you can make a change. What's up everybody? It's your boy Aileris aka Panda Daddy, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, let me know in the comments down below and leave a like if you liked the video. And if you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe fam. What you doing watching videos and not subscribing? And if you're old, make sure you hit that bell so you can get these notifications every time. I know many of you guys are looking forward to the new Morbid Reality episode. That very episode will be uploaded this week, so keep your eye out for that notification. And if you're looking for Morbid Reality content to bide that time, there is the previous episode. It is linked in the pinned comment and description, so go ahead and check that out if you haven't and as always we got to thank the patreon supporters that make content like this possible a big thank you to d the blurred star mr sandman mike sleepy dragon power lover loving tate tron destroy 23 co connor purvis s16 squish rare days my golden experience james tucker bmx 30 cinnamon sticks scott the fake musician buckethead samantha bellhart admin faniker bloody hunter Keely, Dundernaz Hawk, Swiss Patreon user, and Noah, thank you so much for your support. It is greatly appreciated. And if you want to help support the channel, there's two links in the description, one of my merch store and one of my Patreon. Both funds go directly into the channel so I can maintain what's happening here. And as always, stay zesty. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Aileris, AK.